Sam? Gold Camry. This car they believe is Bill's. Just like mine is a gold Toyota Camry. Bill Simmons left in the middle of the night in June and was never heard from again. Today, a volunteer diving organization believes that it has solved this missing person's case. We want to welcome you to the final episode of Looking for Bill Simmons. Uh, today's the day that we did actually find Bill Simmons and bring him out of the water. So many people to thank. It's been a very long road for us. I mean, we started this journey back in October of 2020. We then came back to Nashville five, six, seven days. In fact, this is the eighth day uh, for the actual recovery. Could not have done it without everybody involved. You guys have been following those episodes. If you've not yet seen the build up to this, do check out every single video leading up to this moment. And now we are bringing you into the world of the entire search team and everybody that's involved for the recovery of Bill Simmons. So sit back and we hope that you enjoy this episode. Thank you. Day number seven, in, back in Nashville, on the search for Bill Simmons. I kind of feel, I mean, I feel really bad that we've not yet found Bill. We have brought in, you know, I Team know. Waters. Wonderful people. To help look for Bill. You know, we brought in, you know, Brock, we brought in, uh, we brought in so many people. You know, we've got Adam, and we've got Britt, and we've got Bryson, and so many more that you've seen over the last few days with us. In fact, if you've not seen, the other episodes, I mean, we've got F the 19th we were out searching, the 20th we were out searching, the 21st, 22nd we were pulling cars while Team Waters was out on the, on the uh, you know, in the area searching. We have the 23rd that everybody came together with Christy meeting new friends that can say, Christy, we know exactly what it is that you're going through. That was wonderful. You know, going forward, I want to be that family for families because even though this nightmare is my life. At least some good can come of it. Yeah. We're, we're going to continue to move forward to hopefully end this chapter of that yes. nightmare for you. And with that one, you know, some people are not going to jump over and watch the other videos. So let's kind of bring them up to speed as to, you know, your story and Bill and what happened to, you know, that caused us to be here for you. Um, he was having some medical issues and he couldn't really walk anymore. They had told him that he was going to have to go on disability. He didn't. That was not Bill. He would not do that. So between the pain, the disability, and it was also the first anniversary of his mother's death, it was just a trifecta of things that just sent him over the edge. He left the house in the middle of the night in socks and shorts. He couldn't have gone far. Yeah, so at 1.30 in the morning, right. little gas, no money. So. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Well, we do have Team Waters. I want to, you know, give a big, you know, appreciation to them for coming in. You know, if you guys have not yet met Team Waters, you know, they've been doing sonar search and recovery of lost loved ones for over 15 years now. You know, they've started in 2005. They've recovered over 102 bodies. They've been on close to 3,000 missions. You know, and with them, we're kind of treat them as the godparents in the world of sonar. So we're, you know, we're really appreciative for them coming in. And with Team Waters, you know, I think that over the course of the last 15 years, that although with, you know, donations have come in, you guys are flat $200,000 out of your pocket yes. that, you have not, that you have not been able to make up over these years. So in order to help keep them afloat, please do us a favor as we want to help bring awareness to them. They have a link in the description below for teamwaterssonar.com. They have a PayPal link, so if you can do anything to help keep them afloat and on the water, they would not be here without you know your generosity and your support over all these years. And, and I really want to, um, let's throw Dan on the boat with you right now. So Dan, you up for going on the boat, and let's kind of go show the viewers what Team Waters is actually looking for, their boat, their setup, as we continue the search for Bill Simmons today. Why are we back here, Dennis? 
we're picking up a couple of uh, areas that we didn't scan uh, and don't want to rely on somebody else mm -hmm. to, uh, to scan it. We I can't figure why he wouldn't use the boat ramp and, and use this, but... Well, there's a fence there, too. Yeah. So... Look at it right now. Yeah. If they're out, they're getting wet. <laughs> this is nice in here. Yeah, no, that's not... <laughs> when, when we said we were scanning today, I was like, uh, dibs on this boat. Mm -hmm. All right, what's that? Uh -huh, uh -huh. we got him. Wait, no, don't say that we got him. Well, we got one. How did that get way out here? I have never seen that one before. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you can see the wheels. See the, see the shadow of the two wheels? Ow! Into the... There it comes, there it right, goes, there. right there. Fresh car, too. Oh, oh my God. goodness. Fresh car. When a car first goes in the water, it's all slick and smooth. No algae on it and things. So an image is completely different than one that has been there for a long time. Because the sonar kind of bounces off of it a little bit? Yeah, it, it, the sonar hits that slickness and, and, and pops and bounces off. Okay. Jared? Yeah, I hear you. Hey, we have found a fresh car right off the hill up above the boat ramp. I'm right above you guys right now. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, we're not kidding. I would no. maybe recommend we get some guys that suit it up. Okay. Yeah. The 2005 Toyota Camry sedan is. 189.2 inches, and so 189 divided by 12, 15.75 feet. So we're right in that's, the area. That's about the right yeah, length. Yeah, we're right in the length for a 2005 Toyota Camry. He just read 15.8, and it's 15.75 is what a. <laughs> um, so we're we're that's, dead on. That was that the, was the wave of shock. Yeah, when we found. That I mean, car. so much emotion in that moment where you find. A possible target it's just like mm -hmm. and, especially and, after searching all week and yeah. just having I mean months months yeah. of searching I mean it's just I've, I've been to this boat ramp probably I can't even 20 times in the past in the past few months and it's just it's incredible that he could have been right there the entire time yeah because it, it just doesn't make sense for a car to be there but yeah it's I think it goes to show you never want to rule anything yeah. out. It's yeah. 15.75. Yeah. And that's measured 15.8. Wow. Yeah. I'm really proud of you guys and Team Waters and, you know, the entire crew. I mean, think about how many days that we've been on the water out here and just Dennis's experience and Tammy's experience saying we, we're missing something. This is the most likely scenario as well as, in fact, Tammy kind of give us a statistics. I've seen some statistics in the past as to people that go missing that's in their vehicle that they're nor normally no further than X number of miles. From no their more house. than five miles from home. Yeah. And his neighborhood is just right here. And this is right now for me what I'm feeling the emotions from this. I know. It's My like, heart's racing. Yeah. It's like I mean it's like you just know. <laughs> Four. Back into the car, way up oh, there. It pulled it out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have a little bit of current, but the big thing is, I mean, you're gonna be behind it. Yes. If you just get down, yes. so sink as crack it as fast as you can and pull yourself to it. But also kick at the same time to try not to pull that magnet off of that. Yep. Okay, I got it. Sam's got it. I think Brock might have lost out, but well, they're on it, so that's good.
We don't have to leave without him. I feel relieved. They all gotta stay quiet. Christine is gonna have, or at least start to have some, some answers, some answers or, and be able to start a little bit of her healing process. So one of my. Um, difficulties with this right now is, is that we have now identified that this is Bill Simmons car. We have not yet been able to identify if Bill Simmons is in the vehicle. So now the struggle is, is and normally the families have been, you know, some families have been with us through the entire day, whereas Christy at this point has gone home. And without wanting to give her like the hopes of Bill is in there 100%, mm -hmm. it's the struggle of do we call Christy right now and get her hopes up or do we not? And with Tammy and Dennis, you know, they've been on 102 of the actual recoveries. They said right now, we need to just take the proper steps, notifying the local authorities it's not our job right now without Christy being here. Sure. That as much as we want to, and it pains us, Christy, because I know you're gonna be watching this, that we have to go through the proper protocols and kind of listen to Tammy and Dennis as well because they've been on so many. So, many. so right now, Christy, we're all thinking of you right now and we're going to bring the vehicle out and see where it goes from here for you, okay? So right now we're gonna call the lead detective of the cold case on this one, mm -hmm. and... And this is actually the sergeant in charge of cold case. Okay. Hey, Sergeant Rutsky, this is Karen Bennett. How are you? I'm doing well. All right, I'm standing here with uh, Jared Lysick. Uh Sir, uh, this is Jared Lysick, and we're down here. Uh, we've actually found uh, Bill Simmons's vehicle. We have not been able to identify uh, whether Bill is inside or not. The car is currently upside down. We are in Lock 2 Park. We have the uh, vehicle marked for you, and we're now uh, notifying you and turning this over to you, and we're here to assist you in any way that you would like us to. But, uh, okay, that's yeah, what... I'll send somebody down there and uh, coordinate with you. I appreciate the help. Ab absolutely, thanks. All right. Bye. We just had Doug run the plate on his towing software. Comes back, 2005. Toyota Camry. It's his car. The uh, driver's side door is cracked open. I'm not 100% confident that he's in there. I looked and I, uh, a little bit, I didn't see anything. Oh, so besides the door, how are the windows? Uh, windows are windows are up. So windshield window, is intact. Windshield is. Um, I couldn't tell the way it was sitting. Everything that I could see was uh, up and intact. 100% the car. We'll see if he's in there. I'm leaning towards yes, just with the position of the car, how everything is sat, and the flow of the river. Has uh, Christine been notified? We are not. Per the advice of, and this is where I struggle, per the advice of Dennis and Tammy, uh, because we have not been able to identify that he is in there, we don't want to get her hopes up. And so I'm struggling with this because you know that we've worked side by side with families before that have been at banks with us, and so they know immediately. Yeah. With this one, you know, Christy was down here with us this morning, but Christy has gone home for now as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay to 
disregard Tammy and Dennis, but I'm also, at the same time, they've been on 102 who, of these as Yeah, well. who, who are we here for, though? Yeah, I, I, I understand that. So, but, I mean... So, it, I, I mean, I, and I guess I'm, let's just kind of take a group consensus. I mean, this is not my decision. This is a, we are all here. I mean, we have an emotionally vested interest with being with Christy and helping her out as much as we've been here. Karen? Doug? It's, it's fine if you don't want to chime in on this. So, so my consensus is that we do let her know. I think as long yeah. as we one hundred percent know that that is the tag. That is one hundred percent. That's the, that's the tag. That's the vehicle. Yeah. We can let her know what we She's find. Not, she I, may I, not even be able to. Get I do not think this should be a here. phone call. I think this is a you drive there. You, you, you go there. Or some somebody goes there is with her. We, uh, this is we're not calling her. We need to show up and be there to, to, to deliver this message. That's tough, Dan. So tough. I mean, you, you have losing a bill. You have the one thing that she just said, you know, I need my mama. You know, and, and I know that power because my wife lost her mom years ago. And the, that's all the daughter wants when her mom is gone. Mm -hmm. Is I want my mama. Her mom was her rock. And she's not here right now. And, in fact, I think that her mom's birthday is tomorrow or something. Some, something no, of, the funeral. The funeral. It's the funeral is tomorrow. Yes. So, I mean, all this is hitting her just like right here, right now. As it's all coming together, is is the, the the storm is what this is, but soon that storm is going to pass for her, and she'll be able to start, you know, rebuilding her life from this, and that this is just another part of what she needed to be able to start moving forward and start healing from it. So, bring it back over to the park and kind of keep everybody involved in as the recovery process from there, and let's see if we can find answers today to the who we are bringing to home. So we talked to OEM, okay, and they're, is... they're just wanting us to kind of get some photos of where they went in, because they're not going to have anybody out today, for sure. This is Detective Adam Weeks. He's the detective on Bill's case. Is there a in? This is Jared. All right. He is with Adventures for Purpose, heading up this. And yeah, so if we can just kind of get some photos of sort of where everything is at, if y'all don't mind walking us through that. and I'll, We'll take photos and let OEM know, because it'll be them, not us, you know. I can't think of Matt's last name. I think y'all probably know him. He's the diver from OEM, one of them. But I talked to him, and, and the earliest he can get his team together is in the morning. Okay. Uh, so we're kind of on their schedule. Right. Um, so we're going back to Christie's right now because I told her that any information, any updates I would give her in person. Right now, the information that we have is they are not pulling the car today because the dive team was not available to come down at being this late in the day and they were already on other personal activities for the day. So with that, we're gonna go give uh, Christy the information and let her know the plan for tomorrow.
Thank you. Yep. So where we're at right now is OEM cannot get out here until tomorrow. No, 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 no. No, no, y'all can't do that to me. You, no, no, we can't. Do that. No. I don't even know which how I want to present and share this. We have a very good uh, representative within law enforcement that has really gone to bat for us and has talked to multiple departments with this. Nobody is telling us, AWP, we know you're in town, don't touch Bill's car. We are not telling you to do the car. All we are saying is, if the car ends up on the bank, we will handle the car from there and nobody will be in trouble. Okay. So uh, let's uh, review the footage that I have, come up with a plan. Um, I think I might like a net of sorts, you know, like a fishing casting net perhaps to wrap around. Uh, we can discuss that. Okay. Let's uh, come up with a plan and execute the plan. Back for day two, it's always a little bit nerve wracking because I think that we kind of caught everybody up to speed as to OEM is not doing this. We're, we're actually going to be taking the lead on this one today. So we're gonna set up a couple of lines and we'll go into more detail with it, but we're gonna feed the bags down. We have to use lift bags in this one. And using the lift bags in a current that's ripping as much as it is, we have to just be 100% on our game. So if we slide bags from the upper side downstream on a carabiner, on the line that I already have attached to a chain around an axle on the car is going to make our job a lot easier working with instead of against. You know, it may not make a whole lot of sense, but we're going to talk more in detail with the crew in just a few minutes. So what they're doing right now is they actually have a grappling hook. So he's grappled onto the car right now and he's feeding 100 to 150 feet of line over to the shore right now, which is going to bring us over to what we have going on. So first thing we have is we have the buoy in the water right here, that's that red buoy, and kind of the concrete wall is, I'm sorry, the concrete wall kind of starts right about here and goes down and then we have the boat ramp down the river here. The car itself right now is currently uh, upside down facing upstream, which means that the driver's side is facing the wall right now. So the driver's, so the driver's side is on this side. The passenger door right now is cracked open just a little bit, and it's not open much, but it's open enough that, you know, you could wiggle out of there, but for the size that Bill is, and the way that the car went in with Bill being over here on the driver's side, I don't envision that Bill is, you know, has moved from his location. The biggest concern that I have of the day is that we do have a sunroof on this car, and with that sunroof being upside down in the river, I believe that it is now broken. So that's where we bring into the balancing the safety of the dive team today, as well as balancing if Bill is inside the car, making sure that Bill does not come out of the car. So one of the first things we're doing is we have that line that's coming down from the shore that is on the grappling hook. So grappling hook down, and we don't know where it's at on the car, we just know that it's grappled to the car somewhere. I'm going to be coming down this line with a second line and a chain. That first hookup that I do is gonna be with a four foot chain to this front axle and it's going to be nice and tight and then once that's nice and tight we're going to really tighten up and make that line taunt so that way we can then slide the 1500 pound lift bags down that line but before I start sliding the bags down this line we have Sam and Brock are going to come down and they're going to use the nets and attach them with magnets to the driver's side over here so that way we have a net that is attached to the top of the car with a magnet as well as to the bottom of the car with a magnet completely keeping that window because when we rotate this car up in fact I need to go to this side with the axles because we're going to be rotating the car up on the driver's side which may cause those windows to break and so but now that now the car is on the bottom and that net is there so when we do lift the car nothing is going to come out of the car.
after Sam and Brock have cleared the area, then Bryson will have you come down with one of the bags, down one of the lines, and you're just going to guide it down and you, it's automatically going to stop at the wheel. From there, we're going to bounce back off of it and then we're going to come back down with the tanks. Once the tanks are down, I have everything connected, then I'll inflate the rear one first and then I'll inflate the front one. It's then going to bring the car up and because the car is attached to the to, you know, to a nice solid tree up on the bank up here, the current is just going to gently move it over to the retaining wall over here. Once it's at the retaining wall, I'm also going to have two 10-foot chains attached to both of these wheels. And the reason for it is because now those 10-foot chains are now hanging, which one is going to be the safer chain for me to grab? So that way I can then put a third lift bag on here, finish rotating the car, and now the car is ready to float down the river to the boat ramp where we'll pull it out using Dad's towing. Everybody pretty clear on that one? Yep, Any questions? Okay, questions. be safe, don't get underneath the car, and let's bring Bill home. Let's do it. And then, yeah, so I'll need some good shore support down here. Okay. Alright, check, 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 we're good to go, here we go. Let's go get Bill. Alright, the curtain's getting stronger. We'll put it in the car soon. Alright, we just bumped into the car. That's good. Now we're gonna have to unhook. This is the tricky part. I need to position myself on the car and unhook this line and get it hooked up to one of the axles without losing it. Let's just hang right here and see if I can actually get this line moved to the front. Alright, so we're at the front right here. Make sure we go through the uh, frame here. Nice tight connection. Alright, that chain is locked on. Now we're gonna head back. Alright, so now. Oh, that was in there. Good. I like that. Okay, I like exactly what happened there. I'll go down through there. Around in here. Last around three solid attachment points to there. I prefer that we go down around here. Oh yeah, let's redo that one. A lot happier with that connection now. Sweet. Two solid connections. If we take, we're off and we're safe. We're heading on up. We're good. Go. Be safe. All right, they're coming to you now. Y'all be safe, guys. I'm going to see Christmas. Thank you, guys. All right. So, guys, what we have is here. Jared has pre-rigged the chains for the lift bags. Uh, he's clear the vehicle. Uh, Sam and Brock are following the guideline down. They have two nets. They're gonna wrap the car in a net to contain the vehicle and anything that may be in it so that it stays in it. Once they're clear of the vehicle, we're gonna send the next uh, wave of divers down with the lift bags, secure the lift bags, and that's when we'll do the controlled roll and also make sure the car and the nets are there to contain whatever may or may not be inside so that the contents of the vehicle stay in there. Uh, Sam and Brock, uh, just got back in from containing the vehicle with a net. Now uh, the second wave of divers are in and uh, the lift bags are down, going down. Now we're heading on down. I want to get this 
carabiner attached to that chain. There we go. Chain is locked on. We have both lift bags at this moment that are down. Uh, Jared is preparing to get back in the water. He's gonna zip line two tanks of air down to those bags. And I would say here in about 15 minutes, uh, we'll, we'll be floating. Okay, are we close? All right, we're in the car. Moving the tank off the soft tackle. Moving the tank onto the carabiner of the slip pack. So we're on there. Now, I need the hose. I'm looking for the hose. Okay, I got my hose. There we go. The hoses are now connected on the front wheel. We're gonna blow it. All right, here we go. Showtime. So right now we have one lift back that's attached and fully inflated. Uh, Jared's going down to inflate the other lift bag, which is already attached. Okay, there we go. I can feel it lifting up. All right, we're coming up. We should be hitting the surface any moment now. Going up, we're up, we're up, all right. There we go, there we go. All right, we're floating, we're floating. We got her. Yeah, we got her. The way that's acting, that that has weight on it. I can't find my chain, so we may just drag it like this. We have it in the uh, position we want right now. Uh, our ideal position would have been to put a third bag on there and actually flip it. But because the car is, imagine this is the bottom of the car, we have our two 10-foot chains over here. Going down, we cannot get a bag and the chains properly and safely over here because we would be working directly underneath the car. So for that reason, we chose to just float it down here from, you know, with just the two bags on there. What we're going to do now is we have Dad's towing us here. We're going to put two wide bridles on here, or the, the thick hooks, whatever they choose. The bottom is now touching, and so we're going to finish rotating it on its wheels, and then they'll turn and pull it up from there. All right, so I'm going to attach this to the chain. Yes. So this is going to the back chain. Correct. The other one. Okay. Yep. The way it's sitting right now, with him pulling, it should right the car. Good. That's exactly what we want. Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. Oh, the, the sunroof is still closed. Yeah, sunroof still closed. 
see. I was I was filling in the back. The windows are out now. Yeah. The windows are cracked. The back windows cracked. All right, there's you. He's here. I've got it. Yeah, hey, let's, uh, let's cover the windows. All right, tow crew and dive crew only. Everybody else at the top of the parking lot. Here we go. Tow crew and dive crew only. Everybody else at the top of the parking lot. Work, Jared. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to get this. Same you, Sam. Blue off yeah. the blue rope. No, I'm trying to get this chain off for him. I'm trying to get on something solid. A lot of effort has really gone into this to get to this point. You know, if you've followed through the entire season of episodes for, for what's, you know, taken place with all this, you know, we started back in October, you know, we came back to Nashville, we pulled 17 cards while we're also looking for Bill Simmons. You know, we've been here for eight days now. You know, we could not have done it without, you know, Brock the Rock and Sam and Team Waters and Bryson and Anthony and, you know, Dad's Tony and everybody that's come in. Uh, we want to do one more thing. We want to invite you to the celebration of Bill Simmons. So later on this evening, we're actually going to be doing a candlelight vigil, not only for Bill Simmons, but also for Christy's mom, who was actually, Christy's actually at, you know, her mom's funeral today as well. On that note, we really appreciate you being here. If you've not already done so, please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.